Welcome to 5 and 5 from the One Stop Co-op Shop, where I discuss five key elements of a game in about five minutes. I'm Michael Kelly, and today I'm looking at Isla and Something Shiny, a narrative adventure game. And no disclaimer needed for this one, I purchased the copy I played. I was charmed by the demo I played of Isla back when it was on Kickstarter, but does the actual game have enough legs? Let's find out and get to the list. So first, for my number five, we go straight to the question I just asked. This is looking at the replayability and the kind of mix and variety in the scenarios of the game. And to be very, very clear, this is a game with limited replay, okay? This is like a lot of other narrative games where eventually you'll have seen everything and you'll have gotten the best ending. You know, it's a choose-your-own-adventure game in a way. But with that being said, compared to other games in the genre, I'm going to call this a mix. It does have uh, several different endings in each of the scenarios. The scenarios themselves introduce new rules without making things too complicated to uh, kind of keep the variety alive. And there are fun things to discover, multiple ways to make the game harder if you want to redo scenarios. I'll be totally honest, I don't usually do this for these kind of games, but I played this one between uh, running through it solo and playing with my family members like seven times or eight times through all five scenarios. So the reason I'm still calling this a mix is because eventually you'll have seen everything and unless you can trade or sell it, it might just kind of sit around. But I've definitely gotten my value out of the game, so maybe for me it's a pro. And I have another mix at number four, which is the resource management. And uh, there are some really cool things here, so this might be like leaning toward pro as well. First of all, you have two inventory slots. One is for physical items, food, money, and magical crystals. And the other one is for kind of your mental state, uh, your energy, your knowledge, and your fear. And the mental side is super cool because fear overrides everything else. If you get uh, consumed by fear, then you can't hold the other things, which I like thematically. The only thing that sort of brings this down to a mix is that your resource holdings can be so small that uh, sometimes the luck of which cards come out when and like which resources you can fit at the right time can feel a little bit arbitrary and capricious and sort of uh, screw up your run through a scenario. And then I do have a full pro at number three, but with a caveat, and this is how you upgrade your character. So there are a couple ways your character levels up throughout the game. First of all, there are cards like items that follow you from scenario to scenario and give you access to different choices and abilities in the stories. And those don't get shuffled, they just kind of sit in your play area. But then you also have these habit cards that go into the actual deck you're shuffling to determine your actions and kind of the consequences of what happens to you. And I really like how those two level ups feel different. And what I also really like is they did a great job of making all the choices you have, like this level up or that level up, this item or that item, feel impactful in your play and change the strategies you have to try, but without making any of them feel way weaker. All of them feel useful. I've tried builds with like lots of different combos and everything has worked not always quite as well. That's where the like small caveat is. As you play more, some things are definitely better. <laughs> like some builds are just stronger than others. The balance isn't perfect, but I I've done things that seemed really wacky, and I've still been able to survive and win in scenarios. But my number two is an unequivocal pro. That's the storyline in the game. So you follow this little character, Isla, this little like rabbit creature through these different adventures. And I will say the one kind of warning here is that the game doesn't get too dark, but it certainly does have some things that could be disturbing to children. I wouldn't call it a full on children's game, but I have played it with my nine year old. And with a few gentle warnings and kind of skipping over a couple of parts, he did totally fine. So it's not like it's going to traumatize anybody, hopefully. But with that warning out of the way, this story is great. It got me emotional at multiple points, especially at the ending. No spoilers, but I just really love uh, the narrative they've crafted overall and how things get darker and more desperate, but with uh, lights of hope, how you can kind of go different paths and the choices make sense and what happens to you. Uh, yeah, I really appreciate this narrative adventure. And most of it is told through beautiful illustrations, and that's all they need. The writing is very brief and quick and like just little titles on cards and things, but it works so well because the art is so amazing. And then finally, my number one big pro, my favorite thing about the game, and that is the future and past card mechanic. So this is very similar to Paleo, one of my favorite games from last year, so this was always going to be a slam dunk for me, but you have these cards you're going through for each day, and they're randomly shuffled, and uh, you know, good things might happen, bad things might happen, but cards will add other cards into the deck. And depending on the choices you make, some cards get taken out of the deck, that choice is gone forever, or that thing won't happen to you anymore, other cards get added in and the different choices you make can kind of uh, diverge and split how things happen and generally the scenarios get tougher and harder and you have to like fight harder to survive but you get access to more tools and you learn kind of the things you can use to manipulate your environment more I just love this feeling I love this mechanic I loved it in Paleo I love it here I uh, hear it's much more narrative focused Paleo it's a little bit more randomized and has more variety but I love them both and I want to see this in you know tons more games I just think it's genius so looking at the game as a whole 
if you are like me, if you like choose your own adventure, if you like narrative adventures, if you don't mind playing through a game multiple times to try to get the best ending, to be a bit of a completionist and see all the paths you could have taken, Isla is a slam dunk. It is one of my favorites of this type of game that I've played in quite a while. Like I said, I've played it over and over. I've gotten every one of my family members to play it too. I want them all to experience the story too. I just love this one. But absolutely, you might want to avoid this if you don't like choose your own adventures, if you don't like narrative adventures, if you uh, don't want games that have limited replay or you don't have many options to trade or sell games on. But hey, if you want to see the game in action and help make your choice a little bit easier, I did a new playthrough on advanced difficulty mode. We already had some during the Kickstarter, but you can check that out with the link that just popped up. And until next time, good gaming, and I'll see you at the next stop.